No, I said, it's, no, I'm just, I'm warning you you're going to be on my video. I'm not saying get out of my video. Uh, we made a quick stop at a little cemetery not far from the resort uh, because some folks wanted to see uh, some people who used to locally own, a, I believe it was a horse farm in this area. And you think you'll recognize their names when you see them. This is... The grave of Charles Bronson. And, and what was his wife's name? Jill Ireland. Jill Ireland. Okay, so Charles Bronson and Jill Ireland are buried here. I think this is his grave. Um, but according to the story that Bob tells, uh, his wife, Jill Ireland, passed away before him. And she was cremated. And he took her ashes and had them put into a cane that he used. And then when he was buried, buried, she uh, was buried with him in the cane. So uh, if you've heard this story or if you have some verification of it, uh, please let me know in the comments. Okay, and we're off to our next stop which I believe is going to be Sugarbush Farms. That's Bob who likes to give us a lot of information and tourist uh, guidance Story. and yeah, stories. Story. And this is a, uh, a view of the cemetery. And if you look way over there past the church steeple and just a little bit to the left, uh, kind of right in the middle of the frame now, you can see a tiny little bit, which is the top of the building where we are staying at the HICV, that's Holiday Inn Club Vacations, uh, Mount Escutney Resort. And of course, if you look behind that, that's Mount Escutney. Ready? Yes. So Charles Bronson loved Mount Escutney, and he picked this plot out years before he had died. Yeah. because he wanted to face the mountain yeah. and uh, that's the local legend so he picked the most beautiful spot in the cemetery still uh, we're well, still this is different these are bigger ones this is all <coughs> <bit longer. coughs> this might, might be sugar creek we're going to sugar creek if I want to see the longer one, I go up to Perkinson. But there is a real long one right near the grocery store. Which Wait, I where are we going? I guess we're going to Queechy Gorge first. No, well, because the sign said that way to go to Sugarbush. So. Whatever way we're going, we're going. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that, folks? Whatever way we're going, we're going. Thus says my mom. We are here at the entrance to Sugarbush Farm a popular tourist attraction and obviously a place that sells food, mostly cheese and maple syrup that is made here on the premises and also a variety of other foods that are made locally in the area as opposed to locally elsewhere. Who are new to Sugar Rush Farm? Come, come honey, you can light up this car. Okay, I'll wait. Okay. They're waiting for you to give the spiel. Okay, well, I'll just get the spiel. Okay, I'll just get the spiel. Okay, I'll just get the spiel. Okay, I'll just get the spiel. Sample. Waiting on my stepfather Skip here to make his way in. Beautiful. And we got a bunch of others. While we're here, if you can look around the manufacturing spot here while we're waiting. Okay. And we're about to get our. This is our work room. All of our ladies are working very hard at packaging cheese. The cheese starts over there, and I'll forty pounds long. Okay. Forty pounds. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, so once we're sampling our Mountain Jack, this extra sharp four-year cheddar, a smoked cheese, and then a spicy jalapeno and cayenne cheddar. So we'll start with the Jack, which is the mildest. Thank you. Okay. Check it out. Skip, do you want some cheese? Come here for the tour, you get the free samples. This is the smokehouse where they smoked the cheese. We sampled a little bit of the smoked cheese while we were in there. And now we're going to head down on the tour. I'll be interested to see how, uh, how this goes. And I can remember this is the aging cooler. This is where they keep the cheese as it ages up to uh, four years or so. Eight years. Up to eight years, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for holds, some of this stuff. This yep. It holds 35,000 pounds. Bob read the same sign I did, but he remembered the number of years longer. Better. <laughs> Here's a little informational display and uh, the outside sap storage tank. Love those snowshoes. Good for not only collecting maple syrup, tapping the trees, but also good for going out looking for dead skiers who didn't make it down the hill. They have a small area here where you can watch a video. You can see there's just a few little seats to sit in. And then coming around here, we've got uh, some information papers about what's going on and a bunch of the equipment and I'll be honest I'm gonna know as much about the equipment as you are so just kind of see some of the signs it's hard to get a good a good view this close in but it's a small room look at all this stuff some awards and newspaper clippings, more informational stuff. <laughs> Planning calendars, all sorts of stuff. And there are more storage tanks upstairs in the loft. And I thought we should just stop and take a look at the scenery. So much beautiful scenery in the mountains. And now I'm walking back from the scenery spot because I couldn't find uh, the rest of the tour. And it turns out it ended and I missed the sign that said, don't go past here. Oops. This is a sample of the tubing that they use. They actually have the tubing connected to trees. And then when they tap the trees they can use this tubing rather than having to collect the the sap out in the wild and carry it back they can collect it using this tubing and run it all down to the bottom of the of the ravine where they collect it we're now inside the store uh, as i said the the cheese and the maple syrup they make here but they also sell a lot of other foods that are made locally. And other tourist stuff too, socks and puzzles. But this is fine for t shirts. Rather than a thousand like that. And this of course is their cheese. And just a few more items for sale here in the back. So do folks are from Pennsylvania? Well, some of us are. 
I'm making my selection. I'm buying four different kinds here. Smoked cheese, horseradish, cheddar, the four year, and the sage. And there's a discount for buying all four. $22.95. We have a spot here, a little crossover, and you can see some of the tubing here. You see how the tubing comes down the hill and collects down here. And if you look up in the trees up there, you can see how there's tubing running all through the trees to collect the maple syrup with. So now we walk over this little bridge and there's some trails back here. A little reminder of how to behave on the farm trail. A whole big long path. We're not gonna be able to take that full path today, but there's a, a path you can take up there. Some information on the wildlife you might see. Look at this. Raccoons, squirrels, that's pretty cool. It'd be really neat to see a bear or a fisher cat or a moose or a coyote. I have to admit, I don't know what a fisher cat is. And then right over here is a little chapel building, as informed by the sign. And we'll just take a quick look in the chapel. And then I think we'll call it a day, not a day, but the end of this part of our visit here at Sugarbush Farm. And it appears that we have, as I said, a little chapel, some information about the chapel, and a pulpit or lectern set up there some old pews, and of course, a couple of very devout Vermont cows. And we will stop and take a quick look at the real cows on the way out. As promised, there are cows. <laughs> so they're not giving us their best side forward, but there are cows. And here's a video of a few horses. Uh, I'm not sure if these belong to the farm or not. I believe they do. Draft horses were traditionally used for taking the syrup from the woods back down to the farm. But whether these are re remnants of the draft horses or just other horses that the farm owns or somebody else's horses, I don't know. If anybody's been here, let me know in the comments. Have a good one. And now we really are going to leave Sugarbush Farm. We are now pulled over the side of the road and walking to the Quichi Gorge. The Quichi Gorge is the deepest gorge in Vermont, so we are told by Bob. Here's a beautiful shot of the Quichi Gorge. You can see the river running down through it. Uh, you can also hear that we're on a bridge and there is definitely a lot of traffic going by. You can hear the loud traffic noise behind us. But it's still, it's such a beautiful view. And uh, we were just told that there is a walking trail right over here where you can walk down into the gorge if you so choose to. And I think I see it over there. You're going to see that we're standing in front of a fence. But if you look over there, you can see that there is a walking trail. Unfortunately, it seems like the fence wants to steal the picture, but trust me, if you look over there, you can see it. Somehow we missed this on the other side, I missed it, that there are actually a couple little holes in the fence to allow you to take better pictures. At least that's what we're assuming because it doesn't, either that or it's the world's largest mailbox. But uh, we're gonna go through it here and look at that. This is the other side of the bridge from where we were. You can see the, the beauty, the river down here, uh, up there. You see that yellow tree that's kind of coming close to the center of the frame? Back behind that is actually where the dam is. It, the view of it's kind of blocked. You can see a little cement above the tree, I think. 
Uh, but anyway, the, the, the dam is back there, but look at the beauty of this place. I am so impressed. Beautiful, beautiful place. Stop now at the Kichi Gorge Village, obviously a shopping place for tourists and folks. Uh, there's Antique Mall over here. Maybe we'll check that out a little bit. And then down here we've got a you know a little country store kind of place. And I'm looking forward to taking a gander at the llamas. And you can also get some Segway tours. And uh, looks like they got a black ship blacksmith shop over there. Don't know if that's functional or not. But anyway, we're going in to take a look. You know, obviously tourist emphasis, kind of cute place, uh, an emphasis on Cabot cheese. And we saw all those storefronts outside, but it's actually one big building and you can just walk up and down the halls. I'm not going to go through a detailed viewing of every hall, but just thought you might want to see this. And we will, in a minute or two, take a trip up to the toy museum upstairs. Here on the end, they have an alpaca store with all sorts of things made from alpacas. You can't actually buy alpacas, but all sorts of things made from alpaca wood. And then we can go outside to see the alpacas. And here we go. Oh, look here. There's a whole bunch of alpacas right outside the door here. Check them out. Looks like it's feeding time. I don't know if all day's feeding time, but... Looks like it hasn't been that long since the hay was dumped here. And they're certainly enjoying it. Hello, alpacas. No, it looks like there are, a lot of them are wandering away from the food over to other parts of their enclosure here. Just another day for an alpaca in Vermont. Well, I said I wasn't going to give you a detailed store tour, and I'm not. But uh, that's Bob. <laughs> and yes, we did see the alpacas. But I'll just go a quick through here. There's a candy store with chocolates and candy. We're just doing kind of a walking tour here. A whole bunch of miscellaneous goods. Uh, T-shirts and craft things and, and stuff like that. Various signs, shirts, more things, fudge. Uh, just a wide variety of things. Back into the main room where we came in with wine and beer and jellies and all the kind of stuff that you get when you come to Vermont. And then down here is the antique mall. All sorts of antique things, kind of interesting, almost museum-esque in a way. A lot of interesting things here in the antique store. And it goes way back here. Look at all this. Wow, $175 for a frying pan. That's incredible. And all these things. And you could just go on for hours and hours wandering these halls. Whether it's jewelry or pictures. Uh, an Elvira poster. Uh, but anyway. Uh, that's it for the downstairs. And we're going to head on up to the toy museum. And now we're headed up the stairs to the toy museum. It is admission by donation, but here we go. It will do that. I don't even see a place to leave the donation. Look at this. Lunch boxes. Die cast cars. Bank 
banks. Some older banks, pre-1950s. That's really awesome. Some of the metal working on this is incredible. From the 50s and the 60s. Do you have any toys you recognize? If there's any toys here that bring some good memories, please let us know about them. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Into the 80s. The 90s. I have some friends and family members who would love to see this, I think. Trying not to talk too loud because we are in a museum. Many more recent toys. There you go, you want to buy a museum? <laughs> Here's your opportunity to get a to get a collection. You could buy the whole museum. Oh, sorry. Stuffed animals back here. Stuffed animals and jigsaw puzzles. Board games down that way, construction toys, watch your feet. Huh, they don't have a Bildo Fun. My favorite was Bildo Fun. Comic books, any here that are especially worthwhile? I don't know, especially valuable I should say. And dolls, of course, and a huge train display. Model trains over here. But a, a setup reminds me of Roadside America, which I went to as a child in Pennsylvania. Trading cards, costumes, and of course, the video games. And you can actually get an opportunity to play the video games. And here's the donation book that I missed on the way in. Time to give a donation. And that's it for the Toy Museum. Quick doggy break with my stepfather Skip on the left and my mom on the right, our friend Earl in the middle, and Earl's amazing Wonder Dog Bandit. How you doing, Bandit the Wonder Dog? Bandit even put his head up for you, Dude, he's getting her steps in. And let's just get a quick video of the bear so you can see how big the bear is out in front of the store. And now we're getting out of this place and headed to Woodstock and some lunch. Hey, we're stopping for lunch at the Harpoon Brewery here in Windsor, Vermont. Going down here into a nice little outdoor area. Some outdoor seating and uh, nice flowers. And it looks like they have uh, firewood. I wonder if they have a fire pit at night. I'm going to guess there's one over here on the other side. Sure enough, nice little fire pit to sit around and talk. Yeah. And look, some of the brewery towers. Hi guys, my name is Kat and I'm a server here at Harpoon Windsor. And we are an employee-owned brewery with great amazing food. And you guys should stop by. 
They have a few things that are interesting here on tap. Uh, kind of a standard kind of pub menu. We got a uh, Caesar salad and tomato soup and grilled cheese. A garden wrap. Got a Vermont salad with maple vinaigrette dressing and crispy chicken. It's kind of a standard meal. Pub food. And not especially cheap, not especially expensive. Kind of looking at around $15 a person, depending on exactly what they order. 10 to 15 for the food, and then you end up adding things to it, so it ends up being about 15 or so, and then, yeah. Okay, we're approaching a covered bridge, which may or may not be the longest covered bridge in Vermont. We're not 100% sure. Such a seems pretty long, though. The Cornish Windsor. The Cornish, Cornish Windsor. So there we go, going through the... That is a long one. Yeah. So here we are, going through, going through, going through. And now we have made it through the Cornish Windsor Bridge. And now we have to, and now we're, it says now welcome to New Hampshire. So I don't know, but now the, because I thought he said it ran parallel to the bridge or something like that. See, there's another the bridge over there. The Covered Bridge is a two-span covered bridge with an overall oh. length of 460 feet and its longest covered bridge existing in the United States. There you go. That was it. All right, well, we got verification. And we're going back the other way because we've got to get back to our resort where we're staying. But this is indeed... Oh, walk your horses or pay a $2 fine. Uh-oh. I'm not sure if this is two lanes or not, but I'm going to just kind of pull over to the side. It will be good. Okay. And it said, walk your horses or pay a $2 fine. And we got verification. It is indeed the longest covered bridge in the United States. So there it was. Continue for straight. The longest covered bridge in the United States.